What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Creative Notice Podcast. On today's show, I will be covering the Chick-fil-A kickoff, Georgia versus Oregon. Who got the juice? All right, let's let's go ahead and dive into it. We got Georgia versus Oregon. Georgia coming off his national championship in 40 years, man. Long time, long time. But hey, they're the champs. Um, go dogs. And then you got Oregon coming off not so bad of a season, just not what it panned out to be. Uh, you know, going into week eight, ranked number four and uh playoff rankings or just a you know, just the AP poll, ranked number uh, four in the nation. Had a lot of high hopes for that team. But we're going to go ahead and dive into it. We're going to start off with last year's season. So let's go ahead and kick it off. So Georgia, coming off a 14-1 and season, very good season with a very, very dominant, uh, dominant defense. Uh, that defense right there was something by far, something that we haven't seen in so long. Um, Alabama did it, uh, was a dominant defense. Miami was another dominant defense. But that defense right there is a, one of the biggest testaments of why that Georgia team won that national championship. And then you got Oregon coming off a 10 and four season, four bad losses, one to Stanford. Tough loss, didn't pan out so well. That was an ugly game. If you didn't get to see it, <laughs> type it in, go watch it on YouTube. Oregon didn't perform, didn't perform well at all. Then they lose to Utah, not once, but twice. Once in the regular season, and then again in the Pac-12 championship. Uh, and that had to have been a tough one for Oregon fans and Oregon players because um, they definitely came to play in both of those games, and they definitely came to show up. And it wasn't, uh, I just think, like I said, um, a lot of it, it just has a lot of, it had a lot of ups and downs. And then to losing the Alamo Bowl to Oklahoma didn't didn't top the season off like the way they wanted to. Granted, Mark Cristobal left left them with an interim head coach, but that's no excuse because hell, Oklahoma had the same situation. Uh, Lincoln Riley hightailed it and it left it with uh, Brent Venables. Um, so you know those are two heartbreakers, but let's continue to roll on with this thing. Um, finishing number one in the Pac-12 South. I mean Pac-12 North. Correction, finished number two in fact for North for two losses. One uh, heartbreaker to, you know, Stanford, which was an ugly game. Uh, Jesus, I mean, that was an ugly, ugly game. You know, offense wasn't clicking. The offensive coordinator was out. He uh, was, uh, was sick under the weather. Well, I believe it was actually a surgery, something around that range, but he was out. Didn't make the play calls, but just on both ends of the ball, Oregon didn't play, didn't play so well at all. Um, you know, other loss was to Utah, who, you know, hopefully we ready to cover them in another segment, uh, especially when they open up against Florida. But Utah actually had a came off with a, a great season. Not actually not so bad. Uh, you know, end up playing in the Rose Bowl. So losing to Utah wasn't bad, but losing to Utah twice in one season was really bad. Lose to them late in the season and then lose to them again in the Pac-12 championship. So um, that was uh, Oregon, and then you know rolling back to Georgia. You know they're going 14 and one. You know the only long loss was to Alabama in the ACC championship, which is an embarrassing loss where you go from having a dominant defense to having a low subpar defense where the wide receivers are just scorching them. Um, you know Bryce Young, Heisman winning trophy winner, uh, lighting them up, and then you also have Will Anderson coming across that edge. Also the Dallas Turner having a field goal. So. Um, you know, that was only a long loss, but they bounced back. Bounced back very well against a Michigan team that uh, finally beat an Ohio State team um, and a Michigan team that had a very good defense with two great edge rushes, David, David Jovic and um, Mr. Hutchinson, David Hutchinson. So, um, you know, Georgia bounced back against uh, Michigan, held Michigan to literally nothing, really. I mean, it didn't really, Michigan didn't really start putting up some points until like late in the second half. Georgia did their part. The defense held up, and you know the offense did their part with scoring points. And then you roll on over to Georgia's national championship, facing off against Alabama, where it was a very low scoring game going into the second half. And then Georgia started clicking, defense started waking up, and it was just all you know. Everything else was a you know 
painted on picture. You got the Keely Ringy, uh, Keely Ringo pick six. That's definitely going to be something that I'm about to work on getting the picture so I can hang that up in the background. But that will always be an icon of moment for Georgia football. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in some more with it. So uh, Georgia's returning 10 retort. We're returning 10 starters. Seven on offense, three on defense. The three on defense is pretty obvious. Keely Ringo, you know what I mean? Great pick six. Put a picture everywhere, like I said. Nolan Smith, great edge rushers, five star recruit coming out of high school. And then that demon, that gremlin, that monster, Jalen Carter. Nasty up front. You know, plays defensive tackle, the plays defensive guard. That man is he's just three, four, four, three. Stand him up, don't matter, play him. Is he going to really play three downs this whole season? That's going to be the difference maker. That's going to make a difference if he goes in the first round or if he goes in the second. But it doesn't matter. That man's getting drafted. Uh, then we swing on over to Oregon. Oregon returning 14 players. Man, that's that's great. Uh, especially with uh, Oregon coming in with a new head coach and Dan Lanning. In his first season, that is just about as perfect as he can get. Uh, you got to remember, man, Dan Lennon isn't going to a subpar team. He's going to a very good team in Oregon. Oregon, they had a very good head coach who's a monster recruiter. And we see what he's doing down in Miami. He's being another monster recruiter, getting those monster uh, offensive linemen, getting those monster defensive ends. Like, he's doing this great thing. So, uh, Dan Lennon inherited a great team. Uh, you know, so seven on offense, seven on uh, defense. If we could chime in on it. Uh, and oh, I forgot. Let me swing back to the offensive side of Georgia. I completely forgot Georgia's offense. My bad. But starters on offense, you got Stetson Bennett, the walk on. The walk on, yeah. Stetson Bennett, the walk on. He was a fourth string starter at one point for Georgia uh, offense. And you know what, Stetson? Again, I was one of those doubters, didn't think you could do it, but you proved me wrong. And I admire that man, a young man that said, you know what, y'all want to doubt me, no problem. We're going to win the national championship. So he did his thing. So that's Jesse Bennett coming back. You also got Brock Bowers, the must tight end, and his freshman season lit up the board. Uh, that man did a bunch of nasty things for that Georgia offense, man. He really helped them out to really get to where they wanted to be at. Then you also got Broderick Jones holding down that left tackle spot for uh, Stetson Bennett. Then you got Warren, uh, Warren Erickson. And then you got Warren McClendon. Uh, and then you also got Cedric Van Pran up there in the middle. Like, that offensive line for Georgia, man, y'all can sweep on them if you want to. But I'm telling you, man, that's going to be something that's going to be the biggest thing for Georgia going into the 2022 season. And then you got Arian Smith, track star. Nasty. Track star. Nasty. Then you got Adani, um, A.D. Mitchell. Nasty. Nasty. And then you also got Kenny McIntosh with Kendall Milton. I mean, you could really just bounce those two around. Uh, Kendall Milton's more of a bruiser. He's more of a downhill runner. He has, you know, he's, 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 he can go east and west, but he's more of a north and south. He's not going to really pull too much with him coming up that middle. Uh, uh, you know, Kenny McIntosh is more of your um, scat backs. You're out, you're, you know, out route uh, running backs. He can get up through that middle. Don't don't be fooled. Don't think just because he's running out there, catching um, balls in the backfield, or you know, they got him out in the suits or whatever they do. Don't don't get mistaken. Kenny Mc Kenny McIntosh will come up through that middle, and it'd be a whole nother ball game. So yeah, yeah, keep your eye on them. Um, but swing right back on the Oregon Ducks. So my pal is Dog Nation. My apologies for leaving out the offense like that. But and also in the offense, man, you can just keep naming them off. Really, uh. You know, Eric Gilbert, Darnell Washington, Lad McConkey. They can swing back to the uh, defensive side. You know, Jamon Dumas Johnson, Pops, uh, Robert Bell, Christopher Smith, Tyke Smith. Who else you want me to keep naming? Uh, you know, Georgia's fine. You, you can keep rolling. Uh, and then Oregon Ducks, you know, starting off with their offense. Um, this is going to be a good one. Um, I think this is uh, going to be the big, this is going to be the big deciding factor of this season. Um, you got to remember, uh, Anthony Brown was a starter last year. Uh, he had a lot of very ups and downs. Anthony Brown's a uh, transfer from uh, Boston College, if I'm correct. Um, and he really didn't do bad in Boston College, but I think a little bit of injuries affected him. But you got to remember, you know, Anthony Davis did play against Clemson while he was at Boston College. And he did push them to the brink. Uh, so uh, and this is the same Clemson that had Trevor Lawrence. So um, I just think uh, Anthony, uh, Anthony Brown, just had a lot of ups and downs last year, man. Especially when you, you watch uh, 
a lot of the games that they played last year, man, it was just uh, it's very inconsistent with uh, Anthony there. Even when they went to go play Washington and Washington, yeah, it's, it's rainy and cold, but you're out in the same that Washington, you got to work Seattle, and you're you, not really far from each other, but the way he played in that Washington game was just, if it wasn't for, um, the, you know, Travis Dye, and if it wasn't for uh, KV on Thibodeau or Hale and Noah Sewell, the way they were playing that, I don't know if if uh, Oregon would have won that game because Travis Dye uh, definitely, Travis Dye definitely saved that game for the offense. I mean, it's no knock on the other wide receivers, but Travis Dye was definitely stepping up, especially if running that ball. This man running with no gloves. You can't trust a running back like that. Watch him. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive into it. So we got Bo Nix and Ty Thompson. It's definitely a quarterback battle. Um, this is, like I said, it's going to be the decider factor of the season for them, uh, depending on which quarterback starts and how they perform. If you get two quarterbacks that's very up and down and performing-wise, uh, you can have a long, long, rough season. Um, and that's not what Oregon wants, but going into the first season of the head coach, uh, Dan Lanning, this is his first season head coaching, uh, you don't know what you're going to get, really. Uh, and then you also got, you know, Alex Fork. Uh, uh, Forsett, the uh, offensive lineman, Troy Franklin, wide receiver, he's back, and then TJ Bass, all, um, offensive lineman, he's back. Um, you know, so that's good. Uh, you know, Travis Dye left, um, Riddell, he went to the declare, he declared for the draft, and it was even worse for Travis Dye leaving and going to USC. I think Travis Dye leaving uh, Oregon was pretty much a pretty uh, a rough hit towards Oregon. I mean, any Oregon fans jump in his comments, hey, that's not true. You're crazy in your mind not to think that's true. Travis Dye did a lot for y'all. Did a whole lot for y'all in that season. Uh, Travis Dye was a big, great contributor. Uh, definitely hit a lot of um, uh, misfires on, um, you know, on Anthony Brown's performance. But, you know, shout out to Travis Dye. And then you also got the defense. This is what I say is, and I chime in to when we get to the uh, prediction of the game, but look, dog fans, I'm a dog fan, hardcore dog fan. I've been there when we was heartbroken with Alabama beating us in 2017, to us losing to uh, LSU in the SEC championship, to us losing again to Alabama in the SEC championship. I was there when Tennessee broke us in a heartbreaker when we went up and they did a Hail Mary. I was there when, you know, South Carolina decided to come in 2019 and just shake up everything about us. I was there. And I was there when we had Justin Fields. I was there when we had Jacob Eason. I was there when we was dealing with some terrible quarterbacks, uh, you know. Uh, but I was also there when we was doing great. Like, But don't sleep on Oregon's defense. I'm just putting that out there now. Do not sleep. The returners, Noah Sewell, Justin Flo, DJ Johnson, Christian Gonzalez, which is a transfer from Colorado. Uh, we'll see how he pans out. And then you got Brandon Doyless, and then you also got that linebacker, Bossa. Look, do not sleep on Oregon's defense, man. Uh, the secondary, we'll see. I think the secondary will be fine, but you know, there's still a lot to let be put out there, but that secondary did very well against Ohio State, so let's not forget that. Um, so uh, we'll see how that turns out for um, Oregon, but those are their returners on both ends for Georgia and Oregon. The key components here is going to be for Georgia, Stetson Bennett. I think that will be the biggest key component for their offense. Stetson Bennett, um, you can definitely trust that offensive line. As long as the offensive line holds up, Stetson Bennett will be fine. I think with Cedric Van Prong, Cedric Van Prong coming back, he'll definitely be an All-American. Y'all see him on that center. That man's nasty. Then you got uh, uh, Roger Jones on the, on the left. And then uh, Warren McClendon holding it down on the right in your guards. Uh, if we get Tate Rattles back, that'd be a wrap. Uh, but, you know, I think Stetson Bennett, his key plays in that. And, I mean, I, you know, I, you know, we can knock Stetson Bennett all we want, but if you look at year after year what he has been doing, something I, I should have did a while back, that man's been, you know, wrong with his quarterback uh, percentage completion is wrong with last year. He was, uh, I want to say, number three or number four. Uh, and SEC play, so he isn't bad. Uh, I just think he gets a lot of criticism just because he's a walk-on. If he had some stars behind his name, if he was just a three-star, he wouldn't get so much knock. Because you got to remember, Baker Mayfield was a walk-on at Oklahoma. No, he is not Baker Mayfield. So please do not take this out of contrast. But what I'm just saying is that Baker Mayfield was a walk-on and eventually was a first-round pick for the Cleveland Browns. And you know, whatever Baker Mayfield's you know career went to, that's just on that. But 
it still remains that, you know, Stetson Bennett is proof of something on the field. Um, you know, but I think that'll be the biggest thing for them is Stetson Bennett's play and then, you know, how we are, you know, how this offense is really going to grow from what it did last year. Um, yeah, George Pickens left uh, to the uh, NFL. Yes, um, you know, Jermaine Burton transferred to Alabama. No surprise there. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised he transferred there. Uh, you know, I'd be glad he would stay, but he transferred to Alabama. I'm not surprised. Uh, we just got to see how the wide receivers continue to grow. Are they going to grow or are they going to regress? Uh, Kirby Smart at that head coaching position, you know, and bringing in new wide receiver, um, Brian McClendon, uh, they're fine. Remember, Brian McClendon was a uh, wide receiver coach at Oregon, so I think they're fine. Uh, Defensive-wide, the key components of defense for Georgia, that's really going to be Nolan Smith. I, 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 you know, we, can, we got Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter has been nasty from when he first started to when he did last year. Uh, so he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be the man. He's gonna be the Jordan Davis, or he might just be whatever Jalen Carter be. You know, like Jalen Carter's gonna be who he is. He's been playing like this. That's how he's gonna continue to perform. But I feel as if Nolan Smith is gonna be that that X factor for Georgia's defense because remember he came in as a high five star recruit, number one in the class. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, um, and you know we see the flashes, but we don't see him. Consistently, we don't see a Kayvon Thibodeau, we don't see a Hutchinson, we don't we don't see that Will Anderson out of um, Nolan Smith. Uh, don't get me wrong, Nolan Smith is nasty. He does his thing, but we got to really see. You, we really need to see that type of you know consistency where he's getting around the edges, putting on some moves, fighting through. You know, like that Florida game. That was that was a nasty game that Nolan Smith played. That was that aggression. You know, that was something that he did very well. Hell, even the national championship, he did very well for someone. That's what we need out of Nolan Smith. And I feel as if this year, if he contributes big in that defense, I'm telling you this right now, Georgia's, mark my word, if depending on what we see in this game, which I'm not saying it's going to be the deciding factor, but what I'm saying is that if Georgia's defense steps up, Nolan Smith, Keely Ringy improves, and then they find somebody on that other half of Georgia, Man, I'm telling you, man, it might not be the same defense from last year where they hold the opponents to 10, 10.2 points or 1, 10.9 points or whatever it was. They might hold opponents just to 15 or 17, maybe 20. I'm, I'm guessing it's a, a, a 17 to 20 point that Georgia hold them to. That's still going to be a dangerous defense. You, you, you're, you're crazy at the thing. So, but I, I feel as if Nolan Smith would be that decider factor for me. Nolan Smith is that guy that we really got to watch in that game to see how he comes out. Is he really going to be able to move around that Oregon offense? Because that Oregon offense is nothing to sleep on, man. That Oregon offense is a Mario Cristobal recruit. He recruits elite offensive linemen. He's put him in the NFL. Noah Sewell's brother was a first-round pick, people. Y'all got to understand, do not sleep on Oregon's offense. Um, so, um, but that, those are my key components for Georgia. That's going to swing on to Oregon. Oregon's key components for them is really going to be who's the quarterback and who's going to be the wide receivers. Um, you know, like after watching that Washington game, I really noticed that the wide receivers was uh, non-existent, but that had a lot to do with quarterback play. Um, same thing with Utah and uh, same thing with, you know, the Ohio State game. It really was just a defensive uh, or the defense holding them down um, in that game. But, you know, I feel as if, you know, offense, we, we know what they're we know what their offensive line is. Uh, don't think it's just like, you know, who's their running back, but I think it's going to be offensive line and who's the quarterback, who's the starter. If Bo Nix is the starter for Oregon, yes, Georgia has, Georgia knows what to expect from Bo Nix, which is fine, but the man is shifty. Like, go watch what he does. It's like backyard football. He's like a, it's like, it's, it's like he's like a video game and he doesn't stop running. Like, you know, if I run around that much, I'm, I'm done. I'm losing breath. I'm, you know, on one knee, trying to catch a breath and like help time out. But, you know, so we'll know what, what comes down to the phone next. Then on defense, man, just name them off. Noah Sewell, you know, Justin Flo, whoever you want, pick them. Those are your X Factors. For the X Factor for that game, it's Oregon's defense. How will they hold up against Georgia's offense? How will they hold up against Georgia's deep, uh, tight ends? You gotta watch that. For Georgia's tight ends, they got Nancy. They got Eric Gilbert, you know, uh, Brock Bowers. Darnell Washington, Oscar Delp. You can put Oscar Delp in the slot. You can put uh, Brock Bowers in the in the in the X position. Then you can tell Darnell and the Regiver to go out there, and then you know play their regular spot and just tell them to, you know 
let's, let's do some go routes, whatever. You can have them do whatever you want them to do. So how Oregon's defense holds up against those tight ends and Georgia's offensive line, that's going to be uh, Oregon's uh, expert, the defense. All right, so um, real quick, so my prediction for this game, um, jump roll, please. Give me Georgia 24 17. Um, I, I feel like this is going to be a really defensive game. Um, I think Georgia's defense um, is definitely going to still be very good. You got to remember, Georgia doesn't rebuild anymore. They're reloading. That's it, man. They're just bringing in. They just, that's all they do is bring in more talent on top of more talent on top of more talent. So that's what they're doing. Um, if you think Georgia's defense is going to fall off, go look back at their last recruiting class. They were number three last year, number one. I want to say the year before, number two the year before that. So, uh, you know, you can sit there and think whatever it is that you want to think. Georgia's defense is fine. They're, they're going to be fine. Uh, for Oregon, I know you don't like the score. That's going to be 24-17. It might be closer than that, be 24-21 for all we know. It's going to be a defensive show, show out. Um, I got, you know, based off how, you know, Kirby played it last year, which couldn't find out it was JT Daniels dealing with an injury. Um, you know, the score could be higher. The score could go up to 38 because if, you know, as long as Stetson Bennett stays healthy, he's starting to understand the playbook. So they might just open it up and have him launch the ball further down the field. Um, I think with the chip that Stetson Bennett has on his shoulder, it's really going to push him throughout the rest of the season. And he's mobile. Um, he's not a statue back there in that pocket. He just needs to make better decisions, uh, make better decisions when getting out the pocket and when knowing to get out the pocket and then identify a blitz uh, rather than the zone. Uh, and those are just the things for Stetson Ben has to work on. But, you know, give me uh, Georgia, Oregon. I'm sorry. I know you don't like it, but it's the fact that this is just a reigning champs. Like they say, they don't get hunted, they're the hunters. So, unfortunately, it's duck season and we are, you know, they're out there to eat. So, as always, thank you for watching the Creative Notes podcast. It's your boy, Adrian, and we out. Peace.